previous session we had discussed with the uh, fissures. Fissures, chondritis, osteitis, bony fissures and cartilaginous fissures. Today's class we are going to discuss about the classes which belong to superclass tetrapoda. Tetrapoda means they are having two pairs of limbs, a pair of four limbs, a pair of hind limbs. So we call them as tetrapoda. Fissures, they were all placed under tetrapoda itself, jawed fissures. Nacostomata, jawed animals, they are all placed under. Superclass spices, superclass tetrapoda. Okay. So, superclass tetrapoda, we are going to discuss the first class that is amphibians. See, the amphibians is a Greek word. Amphi means dual, bios means life. Dual life. So, you can find that they are found both in the aquatic as well as terrestrial habitat. But when we are calling them as amphibians, the major criterion that you should remember is they require water to complete their life cycle. They require water to complete their life cycle. Without water, they cannot complete their life cycle. That is the reason we call it as amphibians. It is not that they live on land as well as water. Then even crocodile is an amphibian, if that is the definition. But here the amphibian definition is based on necessity of water for completion of their life cycle. See, amphibians have an important thing, external fertilization. Gametes are released in water. Male gamete and uh, female gamete, they are going to fuse in water to form the embryo. The embryo develops in water. And they are going to form the tadpole in case of the, tad, uh, the toad as well as the frog. So that's the reason we call them as amphibians. So now the examples for that, before toad, toad is larger and if you look into the skin of toad, most of them are land forms, okay, terrestrial forms and they have a dry skin with poisonous glands on them, poisonous warts. <coughs> poisonous warts are found on the toad. Sometimes if we have to scold, don't be a toad, we say it as, that is a nuisance, okay. So toad, the scientific name is before. Then frog is completely in water. They have a slimy mucus skin. Slimy skin they have and they are completely within water. So we call them as rana, frog. Okay. Then there is hyla, tree frog. So population interaction survey, I'll be showing you that. It is completely greenish in color, very small ones. Okay. Hyla, which is also called as tree frog. Salamander can also be noticed. Okay, salamander have tail. They have frog and tail, they have rana and tail, they have hyla and tail. But as tadpoles, they have tail. Yengos, they have tail. But not here. Salamander, common name is salamander, they have tail. Tailed amphibian, you can write the example as salamander or salamandra. Scientific name is salamandra, common name is salamander. The limbless or amphibian, they don't have limbs. They crawl. So, Ichthyopsis is an example for limbless amphibians. So, these are the examples that you have to remember under amphibians. With these examples, let us discuss about various characteristics of them. Amphibians can live in aquatic as well as terrestrial habitats. They are found in both. Okay. So, they have two pairs of limbs because they are under the superclass tetrapoda. They have two pairs of limbs. A pair of four limbs, a pair of hind limbs. Okay. Body is divisible into head and trunk region and you also should remember tail may be present or might be absent. So present in few example I have given it as salamandra, okay. the tail amphibians. Then skin is moist without scales like in reptiles and fishes you might find the scales okay. but here you don't find any scales. Eyes have eyelid, eyes have eyelid. So, tympanum represents the ear. They don't have external pinna. Tympanum is there directly. Okay, tympanum represents the yes. Yes. Okay. So, alimentary canal, urinary tract, and reproductive tract, that is genital tract, they all have a common opening. So, that common opening, we call it as cloaca. There is no anus, urinary opening, and uh, genital opening. There are no such differentiation there. Okay. 
So all the three opals in a common opening, so we call it as cloaca. They don't have copulatory organs, genital organs are not there. Male and female copulatory organs aren't there in case of frogs or in case of amphibians. So you should remember that they have a common opening. Gametes are also released through the cloaca. That you have to remember about. And respiration, in case of these amphibians, it can be by lungs. In case of tadpoles, they don't have lungs. The animals of frog, we call it as tadpole, isn't it? You have seen that bean cartoon series where they show the development from an ape to tadpole to frog, isn't it? So uh, the tadpoles, if you remove out of uh, water, they feel like fish out of water, they die. But if you remove a frog out of water, they won't die because they will be having lungs. And they also have external moist if which helps them in respiration. Cutaneous respiration. Cutaneous respiration, buccopharyngeal respiration. Uh, in case of uh, young ones, gills. And in case of the developed ones, they have this lungs. So all these types of respiration is known as their amphibians. Heart is three chamber. In fishes it was two chamber. One auricle, one ventricle. Whereas in frog it is three chamber with two auricles and one ventricle. Whereas in human beings, how many chambers it is? Four chambers, two auricles, two ventricles. Okay, you should be able to compare that. They are cold blooded or poikilothermic animals or they also call it as ectothermic animals. They don't have a constant body temperature. We have a constant body temperature. So we are all warm blooded animals. But in case of amphibians, reptiles, they are cold blooded animals. That is, the temperatures are dependent upon external surroundings. That's the reason most of the time you might be finding uh, the amphibians might be basking on the sun during the winter season to just generate heat energy on boulders and other things you might notice. Okay? So, and uh, extreme cold condition also, they have some adaptations to overcome that. Their body temperature is dependent upon the external surroundings. Whereas in warm-blooded animals, who are all endothermic, homeothermic animals or warm-blooded animals. We have constant body temperature. Our body struggles to maintain a constant body temperature even though the external temperatures might vary. Okay? So we are all homeothermic, endothermic or warm-blooded animals. Whereas reptiles and snakes, they are poikilothermic or cold-blooded or ectothermic animals. You should remember about that part of it. Sexes are separate, male and female are separate, uh, but they do not have copulatory organism. Based on presence or absence of packs, copulatory packs are the way you can differentiate between male and female. Okay. So fertilization is external, that is within water the fertilization happens. Okay. So the amphibians, they are going to male and female, they are going to release the eggs in water and the fusion of the male and female gametes are going to happen in water. So the fertilization is external. Water medium is required for completion of this fertilization process. Development also takes place within water. Tadpoles are going to form in the water and they are going to undergo metamorphosis, which we also call it as indirect development. Because the tadpole and adult frog, they are completely different in morphological structure, isn't it? They undergo metamorphosis just like caterpillar into butterfly. You find here tadpoles into frogs or toad. That happens here. So you have to understand about that development is indirect. So oviparous, they are egg-laying because so they are egg-laying and development is indirect. That you should understand. Fertilization does not take place within the female genital tract. And that way internal fertilization are It is happening outside in the water medium. So we call that as external fertilization. These are the characteristics or salient features of class amphibia. Next one is class reptilia. Reptre or reptor implies crawling or creeping animals. They are crawling or creeping animals, so that is what it implies. So examples for that is kilone, turtle, then there is tortoise, testudo, we call it as tortoise, tortoise hide, uh, turtle are different, you should find out, you know, have an assignment, find the differences between tortoise and turtle, find the differences between crocodile, 
then alligator and garia. Garia is a GHA or ADA. So between three of them you should find the members as an epino. When you are going to Chennai, there is a Gili snake park. Please visit there where they have different types of snakes that it is there as well as there is also reptiles which are found there. Visit that one of the best you know. preserved sanctuary for these reptiles, crocodiles, alligator, carrier, as well as different varieties of snakes. Okay. Calotus is garden lizard. What is garden lizard? Our alley. Garden lizard. Okay. Usru vete. That is Canadian one which changes its colors. Banda banda la mati gani ke? Banda la ke dili. Anyway, anyway. It changes colors and it shows camouflage. The Canadian one, it shows camouflage. It changes its colors according to the conditions. Most of them exhibit that. Okay. That you can see. Crocodile is crocodile. Alligator is alligator itself. Hemidactylus, wall lizard. They have more than five. Pentadactyly, you just say, okay, I can hemidactyly. Wall lizard. Gecko is also one variety of one of the general species, which is the house lizards that you see. Okay. So poisonous snakes that are found in India, the three varieties, Naja Naja, King Cobra. Okay, then there is Bangaras, Great, Vipers, Viper. These are the poisonous snakes. So that you have to remember these are the examples that they have given under class reptilia. Now let us understand about this class reptiles, the age of dinosaurs, Jurassic period, golden period of dinosaurs, where there were huge animals left there. Now whatever we have our miniature version of those reptiles. Golden age of reptiles was there. Now you can call it as golden age of Homo sapiens. Okay, not animals, Homo sapiens. Anyway, in that period, uh, now what we are having, these are all, uh, today I was reading in the newspaper about monitor lizard. Monitor lizard. So they, someone was trying to sell three to four. They, they consume it as meat. Okay. So but it is bad as per wildlife act. You should not capture or hide the monitor lizards. It is illegal and it is booked under wildlife act. But in today's newspaper, it has about this monitor lizard also. So, mostly terrestrial animals. Reptiles are mostly terrestrial animals. The body is covered by scales or skews. Okay. So, some of them, if they don't have that cornified skin, they have. Cornified under a hardened skin. Okay. So, and uh, no external ear opening. See, snakes, if they are moving towards a snake charmer's throat, if he just holds it throat and he is going to play it, they don't move. He moves the throat, snake charmer's throat. So, that is the reason they move according to the direction of the throat. They can't hear. All your magic seniors, please watch it out again. Okay. So, tympanum represents the ear. They don't have external openings, skin panel, the ear drum. We call it a skin panel, represents the ear. Lips when present are two pairs. You might have seen in lizards, they are having two pairs of legs. They have tail also. Is that it? But snakes, they don't have limbs. Limbs are reduced. When we come to organic evolution, we'll discuss about that in the next year. Limbs are reduced in case of snakes, they crawl. Okay. You have to remember, crawl or tree. Limbs when present are two places. Heart is usually three chambered in reptiles, except for crocodile, which has four chambers. Okay. Then, uh, poetilo are molting or egg dice is something. We term potilo, but we need better. Molting or egg dice. That is, skin is shed. Whenever they are growing periodically, the skins are shed. Snake skin. You can see that lizards also shed their skin. And whenever they are growing, the whole skin is shed. That we call it as egg dices or mounting or shedding of skin. In case of snakes and lizards, you can notice. Okay, sexes are separate, male and female are separate, they have copulatory organs. Okay, fertilization is internal. That implies fertilization is within the 
female genital tract they are able animals oviparous and development is direct it is not indirect development is direct so these are the attributes of reptiles that you have to remember about please don't include crocodiles turtle and other things as amphibians because they live both on land and water amphibians are there they are classified as amphibians because water is a necessity for them to complete their life cycle adike bryophytes so amphibians of plankton ya amphibians of plankton are there bryophytes na because even they require water to complete their life cycle or else even you would label yourself as an amphibian because sometimes you are found in bat tub or swimming pool sometimes you are found on land so that is not the definition so understand about that So that completes our discussion for